San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 8 a.m., a shooting at a party ends with one person dead on the city south side. What we know about the situation and what we know about the person responsible. Plus, local leaders are starting to shape the next city budget and they are asking for your input. In today's leading essay segment, Laura Mays with the city of San Antonio joins us to explain the essay Speak Up program. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 77 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the weekend? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, June 13th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I left the city for about a week, saw the family for the first time in a year. It was full of rain, a lot of love, but some rain. <laughs> Came back here. It seems like we're almost in summer. Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, for those, you know, families yeah. in Pennsylvania. You know. Pennsylvania. Yeah, no, rain. but but summer is here in mm. San Antonio and whether you like it or not, Sarah, the mosquitoes are out, the oh, sun is out. Is. The humidity is not going anywhere. No, it certainly isn't. Those mosquitoes and those flies, man, they really enjoyed the rains we saw in May and early June. Uh, we are going to be seeing skies clear here, but we have had some clouds move in around the city early this morning. Right now, out, look outside. You can see a few peaks of sun through, uh, through those clouds, but it is overcast at the airport, 77 degrees, light and variable winds, and high humidity dew points in the low 70s right now. Meanwhile, it's 72 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 70 in Comfort, 73 in Kerrville. It's 77 in Castroville, 73 in Seguin, 79 at Stinson and 76 in Canyon Lake. So a muggy start to the day. And here's how the day is going to shape up. We're going to have clearing skies this morning, humid, mostly sunny, 95 for the high temperature. Heat index value though this afternoon will make it feel closer to 100 degrees. And I did include a 10% chance for a stray shower around San Antonio and around our KSAT 12 viewing area. Most people will miss out on the rain if we get any rain at all, just a 10% chance with light and variable winds. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how we have pop up rain in the forecast this week, and we'll take a check of the tropics. There is an unorganized area around a low pressure system that we're going to be watching fairly carefully in the week ahead. So a lot to talk about coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Sarah. In your top stories this morning, a big update to the story we told you about yesterday. One person in custody in connection to that mass shooting on 6th Street in Austin. So far, the identity of the suspect not yet released. Police still searching for a second suspect. We're also learning that the number of people who were shot yesterday rising to 14 people. Interim Police Chief Joseph Chacon says investigators believe this all started, the shooting started, because of an argument between two people. The investigation clearly still ongoing. We are clearly still following the story, and we're going to be bringing it to you as more information becomes available. Do you have press charges? Yes. Okay. I'm just waiting for a partner to get here. Already on top of somebody waiting at the gate. Okay, as soon as they get here, we'll take care of this. Thank you, sir. You ready? I'm going to tell you this, man. Well, back here at home, an internal investigation is underway after video surfaced showing a Bear County deputy tasing a migrant teen for a total of 35 seconds. The video was published by Reveal, a nonprofit investigative news outlet. This all happened back on May 12th of last year when deputies were called to a local children's shelter. Staff members told deputies a teen was angry, uncooperative, and damaging property. BCSO tells us Sheriff Javier Salazar immediately initiated an internal affairs investigation and the deputy involved has been placed on administrative leave. New this morning, a party on the city's south side ends with one person being shot and killed. San Antonio police tell us this all happened around 3.30 this morning between Somerset Road and Highway 16, just off the Loop 410 access road. Police say dozens of people were, in the, were at a party and a plot of land, several people. Then after the shooting held for questioning as officers trying to figure out what exactly happened and who pulled the trigger. At this time, authorities have not yet released any of the victim, any information on the victim. And again, still trying to figure out how this all happened. Well, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a person responsible for running over a man on the city's west side. It happened on April 30th in the 600 block of Enrique and Barreta Parkway. Police say the man got off of a VIA bus and was walking through a car wash when a car ran over him and then drove off. The man was taken to the hospital with a serious brain injury and a broken leg. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen right now, 210-224-STOP. 
San Antonio police asking for your help trying to find a woman who has been reported missing. They tell us 30 year old Felisa Paulina Ruiz last seen on June 7th in the 200 block of South Main Street in Del Rio, five feet tall, wearing a pink cap, white shirt, blue pattern pants and pink shoes. Also has a tribal tattoo on her back. Police believe she may be in imminent danger. They're also wanting you to take a look out for a white 2017 Nissan Versa Nevada license plate with the number on your screen 913 J42. If you have any information about Ruiz's whereabouts or the license plate on your screen, you're asked to call SAPD that number 210-207-7660. Back here at home in San Antonio, local leaders now in the process of putting together the next budget for the city, and they are asking for your help, the public's input. Joining us in today's Leading Essay segment is Laura Mays with the City of San Antonio. Good morning, Laura. So good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, Laura, the Essay Speak Up budget survey is out, and it is ready for the community to take part. So what do our local leaders hope to get from the survey, and how important is participation from our local residents? Well, I have to say, this is one of the easiest ways that you can get involved with your city council, especially those new members. The budget process is going to be the first thing that they consider, and it really sets the strategic framework for what the city um, city's priorities and goals will be over the next year. Uh, so the ideas you can share with us are in a quick survey about your funding priorities, if there are certain areas that are really important to you that you don't want to see cut. Um, those are things that we ask about in this survey. Now, Laura, I've taken this survey before, so for those people, for our viewers who haven't taken this survey, you know, what will it look like? What are those budget decisions that they can, you know, take place in? Is it like talking about potholes, like I want these potholes near my house filled or, you know, improving city parks? What, what can they expect from the survey? Sure. Well, I will say it's a very quick survey, but that input is really important. The first question we'll ask you is about your priorities for the city. And I have to preface this by saying, of course, the city is recovering from the pandemic. And just like your budget at home, uh, we have to look at what the priorities are for investments and also if there are cuts to be made. But we ask about your funding priorities. We ask about restoration of funds for certain areas that might have been cut during the pandemic, like attracting businesses with economic development incentives. Uh, streets and, and infrastructure maintenance and other city programs or services that may have been rolled back or, or cut during the pandemic. Uh, so those are the kinds of questions that we hope that folks will answer. And then we also ask them really brief demographic questions too. And these are important to us to understand who is taking that survey. So as you see those, they're optional. But if you share that, it helps us let your council member know exactly what your, you and your neighbors want in your particular council district. Now, Laura, you kind of just alluded to it. Uh, now you say it, it is super short. I've taken it. I took it yesterday, actually. Uh, but it not only asks what you want to see, what people in our community want to see, but it also says what people don't want to see cut. You know, you kind of referenced it earlier, the possibility of a budget shortfall. Now, why did you guys phrase it this way? And are we anticipating that budget shortfall? Sure, and that's a great question. And we are still recovering from the pandemic. The economy is showing signs of improvement, but there is still some uncertainty, especially as we rely a lot on the travel and tourism industry to pick up here in San Antonio. Um, the city is required by law to pass a balanced budget. And for better planning, we do plan a two-year budget. And so that must be balanced over the next couple of years. We are projecting a shortfall. And so that's why we asked the question, if there are specific areas of the budget that you don't want to see cut, tell us what those are. And we have some options in there that um, range from anything from streets to public health, police and fire, libraries, parks, those kinds of services. Um, so we are seeing some improvements in the economy. But again, just like your budget at home, when you have to trim back, the city has to do the exact same thing and look at what those priorities are. So when you speak up, it really does make a big difference. Well, thank you, Laura, so much for taking your time to join us this morning. Again, we're talking about the Essay Speak Up budget survey. And if you can't find that link, you'll be able to find it on ksat.com and see Laura's full interview later this morning as well on ksat.com. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. All right, switching gears, a big update for local students and local families. The San Antonio Independent School District making a change to the start time for tomorrow's evening graduation ceremonies at Alamo Stadium because of the weather forecast for heat and humidity. If you've been listening to Sarah's Five, you know that. Beginning Monday, June 14th, ceremonies will begin at 8 p.m. Graduating seniors will now report to the Alamo Convocation Center at 7 p.m. for lineup and check-in. These high schools include Burbank, Jefferson, Lanier, Sam Houston, 
Brackenridge, Highlands, and Edison. Morning ceremonies set for 8 a.m. So congratulations to all the graduating high school seniors, college seniors. We know it has been a trying 15 months. Yes, congratulations, guys. All right, 810, 77 degrees out. Well, showing an act of kindness in a dark time. Still ahead, why today is the day you should lend a hand or surprise someone with that act of kindness. And yes, the NBA season is over, but well, for our Spurs anyway. But big news when it comes to Becky Hammond. We're going to explain coming up. If you're looking for some family fun on this Sunday fun day, well, we got you covered because just ahead on GMSA, we're going to be live at Trader's Village and showing off some beautiful sunflowers. Stay tuned. Sunflowers, it doesn't look that sunny out. The clouds are lingering. Sarah Spivey will talk about that when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. You know the phrase, do it for the gram? Wait, say it one more time. I'm not doing that. Do it for the gram. Traders Village <laughs> is offering the perfect background for your next selfie or your next family pictures. Now, after some weather delays because of, obviously, the weather, finally opening this weekend, the seasonal 10-acre sunflower field. Anything for the gram. Our Alicia Barrera is live from Traders Village. Look how beautiful Aww. you look out there, Alicia, with those beautiful sunflowers. Yeah, these are massive. They're literally <laughs> as big as my face. And... We're definitely going to do it for the gram after this live shot. You guys, there's so much to see over here. I mean, just the beauty of these sunflowers. I know a lot of you at home have really been looking forward to this. It's massive. There's, It's 10 acres, so you're definitely going to get lost in here, but just lost in the beauty of it all. I do want to show you something. So the reason why this was delayed, they have been growing, but because we haven't had much sun, they were kind of looking like this. So they're finally bloomed, a lot of them. Uh, the majority of them so now you can come enjoy and check this out so the field opens at 10 a.m and it closes at 5 p.m throughout the 10 acres you'll be able to see more than 20 different kinds of sunflowers which is amazing and of course you're fine you're gonna you're going to find the perfect picture spot so let's talk about the prices you can spend as much time as you want exploring the 10 acres for 7.99 kids two and under they're totally free but you will have to pay extra if they want to get on the rides but if you already know you want to check out the sunflowers and get on the rides and there's a pass for you for 14.99 so we're going to be sticking around here and taking some pictures and enjoying this but remember doors open today at 10 a.m Reporting live from Traders Village, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> that just looks like so much fun. Thank you so much, Alicia. So and beautiful. don't worry, the sun is going to come out. So uh, I know it's a little cloudy out there right now, but these are just morning clouds going to give way to sunshine. Did you know that sunflowers, they really do follow the sun? Mm. Like you can tell what time of day it is wow. if they're facing east or west. I have them in my front yard. And mm. In the morning, they, fe they face east. No, I'm the night they faced west. Sarah is our resident gardener and that is great. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look at those clouds out there right now. Uh, Max and Sarah are uh, so cute because this is what they're doing right now in case you guys wanted to know. I'm calling them out. They're going like this. This is what they do when we're I give the weather. The sun. That's what we're doing. <laughs> they don't really pay attention in the weather. <laughs> All right. Outside right now it is fairly cloudy, but we are going to have those uh, the sun come out 77 degrees outside with uh, winds generally calm and light and variable and that those winds are going to be light and variable all day you know we're really not going to have a good stout wind to help cool us down and so just the heat and humidity is what we've got for the day it's 77 in Pleasanton 77 in Gonzales already 81 in Del Rio 73 in Rock Springs 77 in Laredo and it is humid dew points are in the low to mid 70s right now oppressively humid humid, uh, but throughout the day we'll see them drop by a few degrees. Two points in the afternoon will be in the 60s. Still hot enough to produce a heat index value, but uh, definitely not going to be oppressively humid outside for the day. Now in the weather pattern, there were some storms up in the panhandle of Texas. Those have since fallen apart, but I really want to highlight those areas of storms because they're on the east side of this heat high, which has been our dominant weather factor over the last several days. Now, because of the positioning of this heat high in San Antonio, we are going to have to include a small chance for some pop up showers 
and storms during the day with the afternoon heating. Even today, although coverage will be very limited, there is a 10% chance for a stray shower or even a stray non severe storm. You can see how this particular model brings one of those through Lavaca County, uh, but vast majority of us are going to be dry today. But watch what happens tomorrow. A little bit more coverage in the afternoon, uh, although it is going to be spotty. 20% chance there and then again on Tuesday as well. So that's why we have to include a 20% chance for some isolated rain Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week, as well as a stray shower today or Thursday. So looking at the weather today, it's just going to be hot. Uh, we'll already be seeing skies clear around 10 95 in the afternoon, mostly sunny skies, only a 10% chance for a stray shower and the sun will set around eight uh, for a uh, 24 uh, tonight and it's still going to be warm even 80 degrees by midnight and even though it's going to be 95 degrees it'll feel closer to 101 today because of the high humidity feeling like 103 in Gonzales and 103 in New Braunfels. We've been talking about this uh, unorganized systems of clouds and showers over the Bay of Campeche. The National Hurricane Center has given this a 50% chance to become organized by the end of this upcoming week and that could mean a tropical depression. It could mean a tropical storm. It could mean a number of things. We just don't know exactly until we get an area of low pressure, a clear center of low pressure, where uh, this system would end up going. And so we just want to keep our eye on the Gulf of Mexico uh, through this week, especially by the end of the week. Uh, but until then, isolated showers and storms, hot and humid weather. If you haven't already, download our Hurricane Tracker app. We can send notifications right to your phone. For now, though, I do think that San Antonio will stay on the dry side of that system. But as I mentioned, things could change. So we'll, we'll keep you updated. Max and Sarah. All right. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 820, 78 degrees out. Well, a former American Idol contestant makes a big announcement on social media. Still ahead, the message David Archuleta wanted to share with the members of the LGBTQ plus community. And honoring cancer survivors by showing an act of kindness. Today, after the break, we explain National Random Acts of Light Day. So take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, three, one, three, fireball four, daily four, four, five, four, one, fireball five. And your cash five, 11, 17, 23, 29, 33. Lotto Texas five, 14, 27, 36, 49, 50. And Powerball eight, 25, 34, 38, 41. Powerball 10, power play 3. Let's take a look at some birthdays. This is Nikki, 52 years old. Happy birthday, Nikki. And there we go. Next up, we have Mark, 24 years old. Happy birthday, Mark. 34. 34, 34 years old. Happy well, you know what? You know, age is just a number. 10 years younger, 24. Yeah, you look fantastic, Mark. <laughs> Keep posting those birthday pictures. KSAT.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. So today, June 13th, is also Random Acts of Light Day. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society encourages you to honor blood cancer survivors by showing an act of kindness in a dark time. So you can surprise a patient with a special experience, a tasty meal, their favorite song, you name it. According to the CDC, cancer is the second leading cause of death in the U.S., affecting aged people from the very young to the very old. You can also help the cause by joining a Light the Night campaign by visiting lightthenight.org for more information you can just visit that website. There you go. All right, time now is 825, 78 degrees out. Well, the mental stress caused by the pandemic could be behind the reason we're seeing a rise in suicide attempts among teen girls. Still ahead on GMSA, what a new study says about the numbers and how you can get the help you need. Plus, the United States' biggest state is just days away from reopening despite hundreds of thousands of lives being lost during this pandemic. What the moon means for the people of California, we're going to explain next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is June 13th. 
Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I think the official start of summer is June 20th, but it already feels that way. Oh my gosh, Sarah, it is hot. <laughs> it is. It is very toasty out there. Uh, and you know what? Today's not going to be any exception. But us Texans, we still like to enjoy some time outdoors. So maybe you want to head to uh, one of our local state parks. Here's a state park forecast for the area. Of course, in Valverde County and Devil's River uh, State Natural Area, it's going to be in the triple digits. Enchanted Rock, if you want to walk in this heat up that enchanted Rock 93 degrees for the high temperature Guadalupe River 95 at least you can uh, take a dip in the river and the hill country natural area uh, state natural area 95 degrees for the high temperature as well outside right now we are seeing clouds out there but these clouds are breaking up and you can actually see on the visible satellite imagery pretty much east of 281 socked into the cloud cover right now but west of 281 seeing that cloud cover clear already so this morning cloud cover is going to be very short lived and then we're going to have nothing to protect us from that Texas sun and it's going to get toasty. 77 degrees for the uh, morning here in San Antonio, 80 at Stinson. It's uh, 73 in Los Maples, 74 in Kerrville, 76 in Canyon Lake and in New Braunfels. Today, temperatures are going to soar 95 for the high temperature, but it'll feel closer to 100 degrees <laughs> because we'll have high heat and humidity. And then I did introduce just a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm this afternoon. That is going to be possible, but not likely. And then tomorrow, another chance for rain. Uh, but again, pop up showers and storms are going to be the norm this week. We'll be taking a look at the tropics coming up in the forecast in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, a man is shot in the leg for trying to break up a bar fight. San Antonio police tell us it happened at the 13 N sports bar on Roosevelt near East Harding Boulevard around 2 o'clock this morning. They say a family got into a fight inside the bar, so a bystander tried to break it up. That made one of the family members even more upset, so he went to his car, got a gun, and shot the person who was trying to break that fight up. That person got shot in the leg. The victim was taken to Bamsey to be treated. Police later caught the suspect in, at an apartment complex where he will be charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. To the pandemic, now the nation's most populous state, just two days away from fully reopening. That's right, ABC's Zareen Shah shares the latest on California's big move. This morning, California businesses preparing for the state's big June 15th reopening. All venues, restaurants and bars opening at 100% capacity outside and inside if they choose. The last 18 months has been devastating and we can't wait for June 15th to come fast enough. Restaurant owner Jason Eisner says he feels the restaurant world is about to have a massive moment. I think we're looking at a new roaring 20s. What we're going to see is people coming out in droves, very excited. The state dropping mask restrictions in most cases, too, for fully vaccinated people. It feels like it's long overdue, but at the same time, you know, Outbreaks or not, we should still be careful. New York State also on the cusp of dropping virtually all COVID restrictions, getting close to a 70% vaccine threshold for adults where they would join 13 other states. This has been urging people to get vaccinated after his pregnant wife was hospitalized with COVID this spring and put on a ventilator. We have a social responsibility for not ourselves, but other people. Doctors performing an emergency C-section in May. Jennifer Nash meeting her baby just days ago. Thank God she's she's with us today and awake and actually starting to see signs of recovery. And this coming as the nation nears a grim milestone. Nearly 600,000 lives lost to COVID and over 300 people dying of the virus every day. And we still might not be in the clear with just this vaccine. Dr. Anthony Fauci saying booster shots could be in our future. We don't know how long the durability is, but the history of coronaviruses tells us that the protection is not going to be infinite. It's not going to be indefinite. That was Zareen Shah reporting. Now, the Food and Drug Administration giving the go-ahead for the use of two batches of the J&J &J vaccine, clearing the way for roughly 10 million doses. Now, these vaccines were produced at the troubled Emergent Biosolutions facility in Baltimore. Before this, not a single usable dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine from that facility has been approved. 
Now, the FDA says it reviewed both facility records and quality testing results before making this important decision. And speaking of a vaccine, if you are still in need of getting the shot, there is another pop-up clinic happening today. It started at 8 this morning. It's going to be open until 11 a.m. The Shrine of St. Padre on Bulverde Parkway to the clinic has the Johnson Johnson vaccine. If you can't make it to that one, there is also another clinic at the St. Rose of Lima on Marbach Road, 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 this afternoon. If you have any questions, we have all those answers right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, the pandemic caused a lot of stress for many people, but there was even more mental stress among teen girls. According to the CDC, a study published this week found that in May of 2020, ER visits for suspected suicide attempts started to increase in adolescents ages 12 to 17. Between February and March of this year, the rate of suspected suicide attempts were 50% higher among girls in 2019. Meanwhile, the rate among the same age group in boys ages 12 to 17 increased by about 4%. Public health experts say the study underlines a need for more counseling and suicide prevention initiatives. They also advocate for reducing access to more lethal means of suicide like prescription drugs and guns. Parents and peers are urged to listen closely to what at-risk adolescents are saying and feeling. The CDC also encourages people to write down the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, available toll-free 24-7 at 1-800-273-TALK. In your morning headlines, the G7 leaders are aiming to end their first summit in two years with a fascinating set of promises. Those promises including vaccinating the world against COVID, making huge corporate corporations pay their fair share of taxes, and a big one tackling climate change with a blend of technology and money. Still unclear how firm the group's commitments will be when the leaders issue their final announcement later today. And the airline industry has passed a pandemic milestone as more than 2 million people went through U.S. airport security checkpoints this Friday. The TSA says it was the first time in 15 months that the number of security screenings has surpassed 2 million in a single day. Airline bookings have been picking up since around February as more people are getting vaccinated. And at least within the United States, travel restrictions such as mandatory quarantines have started to ease. All right, well, back here at home, getting lost in a field of sunflowers. This is Sarah Costa um, Sunflower. Is, do it. You did it earlier. I did it earlier. It was off camera. He's All right. embarrassed. So you want to drop your fun fact about sunflowers before we toss it to Alicia? Yeah, sunflowers, they are called sunflowers because mm. they follow the sun. That makes so sense. in the morning, they're facing the east. In the, at, in the evening, they're facing the west. There you go. All right, so we already teased it a little bit. Alicia Barrera at the big field of sunflowers. Alicia, how's it looking out there? It is blooming, and Sarah has a point. Sunflowers get their name because they follow the sun. Brian, he's the marketing director for Traders Village. You actually told me this looked much different earlier this week. Yeah, the, honestly, the blooms did not start until about Wednesday or Thursday of this week. It was really creepy because Monday we came out here <laughs> and there was nothing, and then literally within two or three days, it looks like this. Yeah, so to your left, we actually see one of the ones that hasn't bloomed. That way you kind of get an idea, educational activity here for the kids. So this is what they start out as. And the opening date was pushed back. And look at them now. They're just blooming. They're absolutely beautiful. And people can actually come out here, of course, for the gram, for the TikTok, take their pictures, take their videos. But you'll also have the opportunity for professional photographers. Sure, anybody can come out to the, mar uh, come out to the sunflower field and enjoy it. Um, we'll only ask that for professional photographers don't bring the big tripods and yeah, shades and everything because we want to make it accessible for everybody. Uh, and also don't pick the flowers. We want the flowers to remain here for everybody to enjoy. But they're absolutely beautiful and they're, they follow, yes, they do follow the sun and it's really kind of weird because you'll come out here and take photos at 8 o'clock in the morning and then take a photo at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. They're facing a completely different direction. Brian, thank you so much for having us out here very early. Doors open at 10 a.m. They close at 5 p.m. throughout the weekends in the month of June and you'll be able to explore more than 20 sunflowers and you can actually tell the difference. Brian actually told me some are, their circumference is 10 inches. So literally as big as your face. Max Sarah, back to you. Is that a donkey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a donkey. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. I'm glad we cleared that up, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> Just about 840, 78 degrees out.
Well, just ahead on GMSA, a soccer player collapses in the middle of a game over the weekend. The latest on his condition and the life-saving measures medics did on the field. Plus, famous rapper behind bars after a night out in Miami after the break, why he was arrested and what exactly happened. Well, I'm glad that donkey is enjoying the weather this morning. <laughs> 78 degrees. Is that a donkey? Is that a donkey? <laughs> I'll be right back. The president's high stakes summit as the world watches. How will his meeting with Putin play out? Plus, Biden's secretary of state one on one and Trump's secret subpoenas. Now a new DOJ investigation Sunday on ABC's This Week. In your morning spotlight, rapper Polo G, best known for his 2021 single Rap Star, was arrested on multiple charges this weekend in Miami. The 22 year old, whose real name is Taurus Bartlett, is facing five charges, including resisting arrest and battery on a police officer. Miami police arrested Polo G along with his younger brother. The recording star is being held on bond for $19,000, $19,500. Miami police say they are reviewing body camera footage. Christian Eriksen, a soccer player from Denmark, is in stable condition after he passed out unexpectedly during a game with just minutes left in the first half of Denmark's opening Euro 2020 match with Finland. Eriksen received emergency medical attention on the field for about 10 minutes. Medics performed CPR, then took him to the hospital. The match was eventually able to restart and Finland ended up shutting out Denmark 1-0. And singer-songwriter David Archuleta announced he is a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. The former American Idol contestant said so in a lengthy Instagram post yesterday. Among the messages Archuleta stressed is that members of his community can also be a person of faith and shouldn't have to choose between being LGBTQ plus and believing in God. Archuleta went on to say that talking about certain aspects of his personal life is uncomfortable, but that he wants to bring more awareness to people in a similar situation. I remember watching him on uh, American Idol. Did he win? I think he became, he was the runner up, okay. I believe. Yeah, uh, well, we uh, just got the pollen count in, and in fact, there are three allergens in the air, but thankfully molds are continuing to lower. Yesterday, molds were moderate. Now they are low at 390. Pigweed and grass are present too, but they're in low amounts as well. Uh, so not too bad in the pollen count department. The only things you'll be combating outside are the heat, the humidity, and the skaters. And we have a lot of mosquitoes out there uh, and a lot of flies as well. It's already 80 degrees. It's Sensen, 78 in Castroville, 81 in Divine, 76 in Bulverde, 73 at Bernie Sage Airfield, and 76 in Kerrville. Very muggy outside, too. Dew points are in the low to mid 70s. That's that high humidity that you feel instantly when you step out the door. And that high humidity is going to affect our afternoon, making it feel like it's close to 100 degrees today. Outside right now, it looks cloudy here at this picture, and that's because this is looking off to the east. There are clouds east of San Ad east of uh, 281, rather. So it's San Antonio, if you live on the east side of town, or if you live uh, towards Seguin and New Braunfels, uh, even toward Floresville, cloud cover is a factor. But you can already see that those skies are clearing uh, out to the west. It's uh, totally sunny for areas in northwestern Bear County, out toward Bernie and Kerrville. And so these clouds are going to clear very quickly and we're going to be left with a mostly sunny day today uh, with a small chance 10% for a stray shower or storm. Most will not see any rain today. And in fact, there's a chance that none of us will see rain today. Again, the chance for rain is only 10%, but there's a 100% chance that it's going to be hot. Uh, heat index values are going to be into the triple digits, but it'll be 103 degrees out toward Del Rio, 102 in Laredo, uh, 96 in New Braunfels, 94 in Kerrville, 95 in Gonzales. For the forecast in San Antonio, clearing skies at 10, 88 at noon, humid, mostly sunny, 95 for the high with that heat index near 100 degrees. And then mild, still only 84 at 10 p.m. tonight. Winds will be light and variable, so we won't really have a wind to cool us down. In the weather pattern, a heat high is still in place across the four corners, but you can see that there are some storms in the panhandle that have fallen apart on the east side of this. This is why we've got to carry a small chance every day this upcoming week for an isolated shower or storm, because we're going to be on the east side 
outside of this heat high and any complexes that develop in North Texas may end up making it to San Antonio. Uh, so the chance for rain in the days ahead going to be 20% for a pop up shower or storm in the afternoons after we can get some daytime heating as fuel. Again, that's not a great chance for rain, but the chance for rain is there. Other than that, we are paying very close attention to this unorganized area of showers and clouds across the Bay of Campeche in the Gulf of Mexico. The National Hurricane Center has given this a 50% chance to organize into either a tropical depression or a tropical storm in the next five days. After that, we have to wait and see if it'll have any effects along the Texas coastline, and that's if it develops in the next five days. If it becomes a tropical storm, it'll get the name Bill. That's what's next on the list. Uh, and so again, we'll be paying very close attention to the tropics in the Gulf of Mexico by the end of this upcoming week. Other than that, though, it is just going to be a humid and hot week ahead. Temperatures are going to be in the low to mid nineties every single day. So Max and Sarah, are y'all ready for the heat? Bring it. Let's go. Wow, that was a very different I'm, I'm note just, from last week. I'm just embracing it. There you go. All right, sunflowers and sunshine. Time to talk sports. Let's see what we got going on. Spurs season is over, but we still got big news to talk about, especially when it comes to the coaching staff. San Antonio Spurs assistant and coach Becky Hammond set to interview for both the Trailblazers and the Orlando Magic head coaching job. Now, all of this per Sham Sharani of The Athletic. Others up for the Blazers gig include Spurs Vice President of Basketball Operations and former player Brent Barry. Also, South Carolina women's head coach Dawn Staley, Clippers assistant head coach and former player Chauncey Billups, and Nets assistant head coach Mike D'Antoni. All right, Blazers star guard Damian Lillard actually recently said he liked Chauncey Billups and he liked Lakers assistant Jason Kidd as potential replacements for Terry Stotts, former head coach. Jason Kidd withdrew his name from consideration, but Dame Lillard's stamp of approval for Chauncey Billups probably going to carry a lot of weight. Becky Hammond, though, let's not throw her out just yet. Assistant with the Spurs since 2014. She was the first woman to serve as a head coach during an NBA regular season game back in December. Remember, she filled in for Coach Pop after he was ejected, and she's looking to become the first female head coach in NBA history. They're always like right there, um, right, right in front of you, you know, just recording everything. But um, I mean, you know, yeah, like after the first, the first day, you know, you you, you kind of just get used to it. Look at that! All right, it has been a long time since the San Antonio Boxer has received this much attention. Showtime Sports started a two-part series Friday night, giving fans a behind-the-scenes all-access preview of the Barrios fight coming up in two weeks. You can see more from the episode tonight on Instant Replay. Plus, don't forget to visit the Spurs page on KSAT.com. Grade the Spurs season, give them the final report cards. The sports guys, they're going to reveal their final marks tonight, 11 p.m., right after the night beat. What are you going to grade the Spurs this year? What am I gonna what? Grade them like A, grade B, them? C. Oh, always an A in my heart, Spurs. He's an easy grader. <laughs> Eight fifty-one, seventy-nine degrees out. All right, some bad news, but you may be seeing some more of these slithering guys around, and it's Ugh. not just because of the recent rain we've been having. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're talking to the San Antonio Zoo on why snakes are coming out and what you should do if you see one. In the news you need to know before you go, one person shot and killed at a party on the city's south side. Police tell us it all happened around 3.30 this morning between Somerset Road and Highway 16, just off Loop 410 Access Road. Several people for the party were actually held for questioning. Meanwhile, authorities not releasing any information on the victim, and they're still working to figure out what exactly happened and who was responsible. Skies are clearing and it's going to be a hot day. 95 for the high temperature, 10% chance for a stray shower. Feeling closer to 100 degrees though uh, because of the high humidity. Winds will be light and variable. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about molds. Molds are low today. They're down from yesterday. And looking ahead to the week, a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm through Wednesday. We'll be watching the tropics at the latter half of the week to keep an eye on things to see if anything develops in the Gulf of Mexico. We've got a great article about the tropics right now on KSAT.com. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. If you are out and about today, bring water, find shade, be safe, have a uh, great Sunday. Mosquito spray. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> have a good Sunday.